I walk into buildings all the time to test network jacks. I've walked into offices, hotels, libraries, classrooms, you name it, and plugged into the random ethernet jacks on the wall. Nobody has ever stopped me, not once. No ID checks, no questions, no security escort, just me in full access to their internal network. And that is actually a huge problem. Ethernet has no authentication by default. Its job is to really connect things together. Anyone can plug in and access your network. And if they know what they're doing, they could access your internal resources and servers, run packet captures, and even get network information like management IP addresses, VLAN information, network topology, basically everything that keeps your security team up at night. So let me show you why this happens and more importantly, how to fix it. A lot of places think that physical security is enough or that if someone plugs into one of these jacks, someone will notice, ask questions and call security. But honestly, that rarely happens. Most people aren't paying attention and even if they are, they really don't care. And you don't even need a laptop or some big hacker looking piece of equipment. I personally carry around this network tester. It fits in my back pocket and can even pass as some kind of like video game. There's a lot of tools out there like this one, and they are really, really easy to get a hold of. So when I tell you that physical security is not enough, please believe me. So what can you actually see when you plug into one of these jacks? First, CDP or LLDP information. These are neighbor discovery protocols that switches use to talk to each other. Switch host name, management IP addresses, what port you're connected to, iOS version, platform information, VLAN IDs, native VLAN, voice VLAN if they're using it. You're literally mapping their entire network infrastructure just by plugging in. Then you can run packet captures and see what traffic is actually flowing. Sometimes because it's on the internal network, you can even find credentials in clear text, internal server names database connections, all from a wall jack in a conference room. Come on. So why don't all companies fix this? Well, it comes down to a mixture of what I mentioned earlier, an overconfidence in physical security, and the fact that port security can also be a giant pain in the butt. You have to manually configure which MAC addresses are allowed on every port. If a user moves their connection to a different one, the port shuts down or stops sending data. When this happens, users usually do one of two things. They call the help desk, which is actually the best case scenario, but more than likely, they will think the port is bad and just try another one, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, and another one, and another one. Before you know it, a single user has gone around the office and disabled every single open port on a switch. This happens more often than you think and the network administrator then has to go in and manually fix every single port. So a lot of smaller IT teams just don't enable it. They accept the risk to save them hours of work. However, setting up port security is actually really simple. The switch looks at the source MAC address of frames coming into the port. If that MAC address is allowed, traffic flows. If it's not allowed, the switch takes one of three actions. It either shuts the port down and sends an alert, which is the default action, restricts it, which means that the port stays up, but drops all of the traffic and alerts on it. Or it puts it in protect mode, which drops the traffic and doesn't alert on it at all. I've only personally seen shutdown and restrict used in production environments. Protect sounds nice on paper, but not having log messages just adds confusion and takes longer to troubleshoot. Which, side note, if you are gonna mess with port security and you have multiple MAC addresses on a port, you'll need to allow all of them. This happens a lot with IP phones. Now, let me show you how to configure this. All right, I've remoted into one of my test switches in my home lab, and I hooked up a PC to the first port. So I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna go ahead and log into the switch and do a show interface status, and we are connected, all right? 
right there connected. Now I'm going to do a show run on the interface and you can see it is the default configuration. There is no inter no configuration under this interface at all. So we are right out of the box basically. Now to configure port security, you're gonna go under the interface itself. So config T interface FA01. And remember I said there was no configuration. Well, that's gonna come back up in a second. So the command to enable port security is switch port, port dash security, and then enter. That is, if you hit enter right here, it'll set it to the default shutdown with one MAC address allowed. So let's go ahead and press enter. Boom, what happened? Command rejected. Fast Ethernet 01 is a dynamic port. Do you remember when I said that there was no configuration under Fast Ethernet 1 right here? No configuration. Well, I fib to you because even though it shows no configuration, Cisco hides the default configuration in its commands, in its, in its show commands. So even though it doesn't show any configuration, there is a configuration. The configuration is set that the port is dynamic. It will auto negotiate what type of port it is. And port security, you must hard code it. See, it has to be an access port or a trunk port. So I have a PC hooked into it. So let's make it an access port. Let's go ahead and do that now. So switch port mode access. It is now access. So now if I rerun that command, switch port port security, it should work. And boom, it did. Now, when you do this, it set it to the default, which is shut down one MAC address. Again, we can show that by doing a show port dash security. And here you see MAC address secure count one current address one. So there's one Mac address that it's currently reading and there are zero violation counts. There shouldn't be because I haven't messed around with anything yet. And the security action is shut down. So that's all the pertinent security information that we need for this port. Now, the way this works is that as long as there's one Mac address and it doesn't matter what that Mac address is, it'll be okay. So if I unplug that from the switch and plug in my testing equipment or a malicious sniffer or something like that, this will still be up. It'll still allow it because it still only has one MAC address, no matter what that MAC address is. If you want to hard code the MAC address, you have to go back into port security. So let's go switch port, port dash security, right? And then hit question mark. You'll see a couple different options here. We want to do MAC address, MAC address, question mark, and uh, you can see there's two options. You can either put the MAC address in itself or do sticky. Sticky is the MVP goat of port security because what sticky does is whatever's plugged in right now will be the, the MAC address that it saves in the configuration that has to be that MAC address for the port to go up, okay? Typing in and collecting MAC addresses is a huge pain in the butt if you're setting this up. So if you can do sticky, do sticky. It is, it is the best. So I'm gonna do sticky right here. All right, now if I do this, it should show the MAC address and it does right here. Switch port, port security, sticky, and that is the MAC address of my PC that I have currently plugged in. All right, now let's do the fun thing. Let's create a violation. <laughs> I love being violated. Uh, that sounded bad, but you know what I mean. I, I love I love testing things out. Before we do that, I'm gonna um, do terminal monitor so that we can actually see the violations pop up because I'm remoted in and it's only gonna show, I don't have SNMP or any of that fun stuff configured in this right out of the box. So terminal monitor, I'm gonna go unplug my PC and plug in a different device and let's see the violations happen. All right, I'll be right back. I'll try to, I'll try to go quick. Hang in with me, all right, hang in. Oh, almost fell. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to go too fast. Uh, it's not, nothing but the best for you guys. Okay. So we got it. It went down. It came back up. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see. If, oh, there it is. Error disabled state security violation occurred. Look right here. Error detected on FA01. Putting FA01 in 
error disable state, security violation. And it gives us the MAC address that caused the, the security violation. So if I had SNMP enabled on here, if we had some kind of monitoring enabled, that trap could be then sent to our monitoring software. We could get alerts on our phones or monitoring software, or whatever, and be alerted that there is a security violation taking place. So let's look at it, show interface status. And we see right here, status, er, disabled. Erm, it's disabled. Uh, so again, the only way to shut this down or to, to fix this is to shut and no shut the port. But if I were to do that right now, if I were to shut and no shut this port, nothing would change because it is still hard coded for the original MAC address. This gets people in trouble a lot because they will bang their head against the wall saying, why the heck is this port being error disabled and being connected and then error disabled and over and over again, and all they're doing is shut, no shut, no shut, no shut. And they don't realize that um, port security is enabled or configured with a specific MAC address. So show switch port, switch dash, come on, security. Nope. Oh, so switch port. Oh my gosh, I can't type. I can't type anymore. Show switch port, port security. Port security. Oh my gosh. I had a little brain, brain aneurysm there. All right. So we see violation count is one. We have a violation. We have successfully been violated. And to really to, to fix this issue, if we were a network admin and we wanted to fix it, we'd have to track down the port, track down what's plugged in, take it away and yell at the person or kick them out or, or do whatever we need to do. But that is the basics of port security. But in the end, port security is pretty basic. It's just MAC address filtering. The real port security solution that larger companies use is called 802.1x. It's actually user authentication. There's also network access control solutions like Cisco's ICE that give you even more security, including device profiling, posture assessment, and dynamic VLAN assignments. But those are a lot more complex and frankly expensive. Port security is free, built into your switches, and takes five minutes to configure. If you're not ready for 802.1x, this could be a solid first step. So here's what to do right now. Walk your building. Find all of your exposed Ethernet jacks that are in public areas or at least areas that are easy to get to. Enable port security with sticky MAC addresses and restrict mode. Disable CDP and LLDP on those ports and then set up SNMP alerts and document your configuration. Yeah, I said the D word, document it. Please, just, just, I know, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I know, just, just trust me, okay? <laughs> document it. After that, you're on your way to having a more secure access layer. All right, I hope that helped. And don't forget to follow me, you nerds, for more networking content.